Sometimes things deserve to stay in the past, but if you want to bring them current, this one's only 27 bucks, and you could relive my childhood. God help you. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. You know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome to my channel. What you're about to see is a series of video clips that I recorded on a recent road trip that I took leaving Chicago, heading through Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, and then rounding back through Maryland, and Ohio, Indiana, and then back home. This particular segment is the series of videos that I recorded in Pennsylvania. There were a number of stops that I made, and until I went to vi edit the videos together, I discovered... I didn't do a very good job planning out the videos. So there were videos where I recorded outside the building, but never recorded inside the building. I did a closing video of a building I never introduced. So it was a little bit uh, uh, chaotic uh, because it did cover a multiple day period. I was in Pennsylvania longer than any place else. And so, and I also didn't want the video to get too long. So I just wanted to do a quick introductory video uh, to introduce what you were about to see and then kind of let it play its course. Uh, the individual segments that I retained, I think are really good. I showcased some of the fun things that I found along the way, some things that are specific to the areas that I was visiting, uh, but all of them start with a initial visit to the Pittsburgh area uh, where I did multiple trips that I didn't videotape at all. And then I pro slowly progressed east and uh, pretty much culminates uh, in a visit to Adamstown, Pennsylvania. There is another series of videos that I did from my trip to uh, Philadelphia. Those have already been posted. I did uh, some collaboration videos with Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. So two of the videos are on my channel. You'll see a, a live haul video with Scott and then also a visit technically to Wilmington, uh, but with Scott, we visited the Demores estate from uh, the DuPont family. Those two videos are on my channel, and if you go to Scott, uh, the old curiosity shop, if you go to his video or his channel, he also has a video that we recorded. It wasn't a live haul, we recorded a, a haul, and you'll see some of the items that he and I picked up while we were in Philadelphia. So I hope you enjoy this series of videos and uh, kind of follow the, Again, a little bit chaotic and a little loud, uh, it turned out, in a couple of places. Uh, but you enjoy the video and get a taste of what I was doing and what I was experiencing on my road trip through Pennsylvania. So I'm with Rebecca. Hello. In front of the Antique Mall, Ohio River. And I, we've been really bad today. We've already gone to three different places. I bought something at every place and I haven't filmed anywhere yet. So this building looked like it was fun. I feel like I'm about to get run over, but it's, uh, I guess it's a traditional antique mall. I think there's multiple vendors in this one and the reviews are mixed. So we shall see what it has in store. So sometimes you have to look up and sometimes you have to look down and you come across something like this. So this is a massive, I'm gonna get my shadow, turn it out to get in the shot, but just to give you a frame of reference, how big this is. Uh, assuming a mantle piece, or maybe for the top of a TV, a uh, pair of uh, owls, you know, frogs down the bottom, clock. It's, I believe it's chalkware. It's got some damage to it. Uh, still got the original plug, $145, which seems completely reasonable for how epic this piece actually is. And it's all found on the floor of the antique mall. Hey, this is Patrick, Trusty Huxton Mercantile, day four of the Trusty Travel Road Trip. I am uh, just outside Pittsburgh, a little bit south. I was really bad yesterday. I was hoping to vlog, you know, my entire Pennsylvania trip and had so much fun shopping with Rebecca from Kitchy and Bitchy yesterday, I barely recorded anything. So starting out the day, uh, heading east and uh, gonna make some stops along the way. My first one is the EN Antique Mall in, yeah, I don't remember what town I'm in. Um, yeah, I don't know, uh, south of, uh, 
south of uh, Pittsburgh. No, I think it's, I actually I'm still north of Pittsburgh, it's south of where I was. I don't know. I'll put it. I'll put in the comments where I am. Uh, but I don't have a lot of time here because I've got a schedule to keep today as I'm heading east toward my daughter's graduation. Uh, but let's see what I can find in an hour at the EN Antique Mall. So for some of you who've been watching my videos, you may have seen in the background, uh, I've got a small tea canister collection and it's pretty much filled up the space that I've allocated for it. And so my philosophy is it's uh, once I start filling that space, if I add anything, something else will have to be retired. So I tend to be sensitive about what I buy. But this is when I like to buy uh, sets is when I only I only carry the tea. It has to say the word tea on it. I don't want one that's just the shape or it's part of a canister. But more importantly, it's by itself when I find it. I hate breaking up a set. So here they have a nice little layout of a tea and a sugar and an oatmeal. But if you look carefully, although they're all blue, uh, they don't match. And so this one is, it's only 10 bucks for the canister. And it's in decent shape. Um, March Germany on the bottom. Um, there's a little, well, it doesn't feel like a chip. There's just like a little rough spot there. So that might just be like some dirt. I hope I can clean off. Um, yeah, lid just needs to be cleaned up a little bit, a little discoloration, but you know, it's vintage. And uh, I think in general, it's in pretty good shape. And I, at this point, uh, cause I am looking to redo some, uh, to redo my kitchen. I am kind of leaning toward building up more of the blue. So um, haven't added to the tea canister collection in a while, but I think uh, this will be coming home with me. Uh, but it's for me, not for sale. But uh, at the here at the antique mall, a piece here I wanted to show because it's just you know there's industrial design is uh, and decor is so popular right now. This is a galvanized metal fire bucket, but if you look it has a dome shaped bottom. And as I understand things like this, I've never seen one of this age, but when they look like this, they were carried, it either would go into a well, because then when you dropped this into a well, it would automatically tip because it doesn't have a flat bottom and that would help it fill. Or I've also seen ones like this would be air carried, they'd be much bigger, but so when they could drop it into a lake, it would tip over and then start filling with water. Um, I did look online really quick. This is listed for 55, which pretty much seems to be what they go for online, which actually surprised me. I thought 55 was cheap, um, but so it is. But then if, you know, if I were to get it online, you have to pay shipping. Um, but it's not something I want because the problem then, it's got a really cool shape, but how do you display it? Because it doesn't want to sit upright. It wants to tip over. You'd almost have to hang it or have a stand for it. But I thought that was cool because I've actually never seen a fire bucket uh, with that. And then in the theme of red, I have to showcase this piece, is what I believe is chalkware ballerina. Uh, it's a lamp. So it says it's cool, K-E-W-L ballerina oh no it's cast <laughs> and it's heavy so they're warning us um it's only 68 dollars this is a lot of look for 68 bucks i don't know what the age and that would be oh that's cool they have a, a red light bulb in it so it's got the original cord yeah picking it with my left hand it is pretty heavy um it must be stamped on the bottom or something for them to know that it's it's a cool K-E-W-L. But it's almost like she's dancing in a fireplace insert. That's just really cool. And I think that's you know a great price of 68 bucks. Because it's so heavy, it'd be difficult for me to pick up and make any money and then have to ship it, because that would be pretty expensive to ship. But that's why you need to, you know, now that things are calming back down, you know, get out and about, check out your antique stores, which have been filling up with inventory for the past few months, and find stuff like this that you don't have to pay for shipping. And hey, you wouldn't even know that you needed it until you saw it at the antique store. Everybody loves vintage Disney, including me. And I always love when I see things that I've never seen before. And so this is 
the Mickey Mouse Library of Games. And so it kind of comes packaged that looks like they're like a, a bookshelf with books. And when you open them up, they're like matchbox style boxes with games inside. So it even has the instructions, rules for playing, Donald Duck game. So each game, I guess, is slightly different. Um, but you know, even the little packaging looks like a book. So just some cool graphic design, the way that looks. I didn't look this one up, uh, 55 bucks. They've got it marked firm. They know what it's worth. I'm not going to pick it up for resale, but uh, definitely something I wanted to be able to highlight uh, here at the Antique Mall. So I've talked a little bit about flashbacks of your past that you feel you know, maybe you forgot that you blocked out. This came rushing back to me. If I look hard enough, there will be a photograph I will find that shows this hanging over our sofa. Same color, same size, home interiors, the bull and the matador. I have no idea, you know, looking back, what connection we had to a bull or matador living in the Midwest. But we had one of those, and then next to it was a gigantic, about the same size, of plastic home interiors Spanish fan. So, you know, it looked great with the brown and orange crushed velvet couch. But... Sometimes things deserve to stay in the past, but if you want to bring them current, this one's only 27 bucks and you could relive my childhood. God help you. I'm not sure I ever would have come across a time where I would pass up a set of coasters, unless it was because of price. But this one, I'm definitely passing up. They are packaged, and that's the only reason I'm touching them. They are packaged, but you can see their fur and when you look at the tag it is impala fur uh the only impala i want to be involved in is a car so these are going to stay behind even though at six bucks it's a really good price uh, for a full set of six i just don't So, I don't know what these are, but they've got Mary Beth written all over them from Fat Bird Finds. So, here's all your circus items. They all have the craft name on them, so I don't know if these would have been used in a grocery store to advertise, but we've got Thrilling, and we've got Daring, and then we've got Sideshow. And it's all under Craft Circus Days. So, welcome to the circus, Mary Beth. So I had to set an alarm to make sure I got out of there in time, and uh, as a result, I only got two floors of the whole place. So, did get some good things that I'm gonna be bringing home, and uh, some things for me, uh, item for a gift. So, you know, little, decent little haul here at uh, and the E.N. E. N. Miller, E.N. Miller Antique Mall. All right, here is Patrick, trusty huckster, along with Melody. Uh, you've seen in the chats, now you get to see her in person. We are at Miller's Crossing Flea Teak in Irwin, Pennsylvania. I've never been to a Flea Teak, I've never heard of a Flea Teak, so we will see what is in store inside. So here's a piece I wanted to highlight because it's a nappy dish. It's got the little handle, you, put whole, you serve wet lemon wedges on it. Nothing particularly special about it. It is Noritake. It's got the M in the in the wreath. But one of the things this one has, which I had not seen before, is it has the U.S. design patent applied for as part of the stamp. So this particular design, which it is hand-painted, it's got the raised... Um, I don't know if that's actually Moriyagi. Yeah, might be Moriyagi. Actually, it's interesting. The Moriage Moriyagi is on the edge but not on the opposite, the leading edge. So this is either hand painted, I don't have my loop, so I think that's hand painted, um, but this one is hand painted. You can even see that it's got the raised gold as opposed to that. So it's actually got both designs. So this would probably be something you could date pretty specifically because if I could figure out what pattern this was, you would then know, well, when did they apply for the design patent? Um, so stuff like that, it's again one of those things I like about uh, European porcelain, some American porcelain, is that there's details in the stamps that you can then research and really helps date it. 
Unfortunately, there's no price tag on this, so I don't know what it would cost. But, uh, you know, it's just a sweet little piece that I thought was interesting because of the stamp. So this is a booth which definitely has some legitimate vintage uh, throughout it. But they're doing it in an interesting way. So I'm literally looking up. They have a table. I don't know if I, it looks like it was an assembled table. Um, I don't think it was. It started as a table, but who knows? And they have attached all of these vintage items onto it. So the silver plated butter dish, the stoneware china, even the uh, goblet. They have put some sort of a epoxy liquid in there, some old photographs. So I would say in an ideal world, this would not be hanging from the ceiling. You would have this maybe at your entryway, but I can imagine if you had this in setting as a table in a antique mall, people would try and be picking things off of it. <laughs> so it's a creative way to display. And then they made much smaller pieces, uh, this little wall hanging, just beautiful. You know, the Glee Club concert and the dice and the compass. Just really sweetly done. Uh, that one's 45. Um, they've got this kind of old terrarium that was done with the old glass. You know, it's just kind of put some different pieces in there. Um, advertisement, you got a little Scrabble tile, or no, bingo tile actually back there. So we've got that piece. Another wall hanging here. Um, 35 for this one. Is that that was you know sweet, just kind of a mixture that really takes an artistic eye to put something like that uh, together, and then these little ones over here, kind of like a little kitchen cupboard, but they like threw a magnet in there, you know the um, honey whorehound tar, <laughs> you know there's just a great little medicine chest with a billiard ball, and then this is the one that caught my attention was this little shoe shine uh you got the little um measuring tape pepsi just kind of and then this one of all of the others this one's only 18 dollars. so this one is actually really reasonably priced not that the others aren't um but it's just a simple wall hanging piece that uh, again just kind of a really cool eye that i wanted to be able to showcase Sometimes when you walk by a booth, they can't help but grab your attention, and they're helping every bit to make sure that they grab your attention. So we've got a working street lamp, street light. We've got the arrow signals for turning. We've got the neon lights for the alcohol. And then on the back wall is this amazing display of the uh, tap pulls for all the beer brands. So some of these aren't necessarily going to be all that old uh, because the oldest ones wouldn't have had all these elaborate shapes. And I was in another mall on this trip and I wanted to show it, but the way they were set up, I just couldn't get an angle to be able to show the display. So the fact that they have this on the back wall really does showcase these. You know, so it is an area of collecting by itself. So you've got, you know, a blue moon for $20. Uh, you've got this old Milwaukee is 24. Uh, that Sapporo in the shape of the uh, sword is 45. That actually says as is 45. Uh, so you've got to mix some really fun uh, shapes. So great for a barware collection, you know, say a man cave, you know, just you don't necessarily even have to have a whole collection like this. Just a handful of them would be a really good uh, conversation piece just based on the, the shapes and designs that are available. All right, so we have finished up at the Fleetik in Irving, Ir Ir Irvin, Irwin, there we go, Irwin, Pennsylvania. And uh, we actually both got some things. So it's, it was a, definitely a good stop. I got to meet Melody and uh, she picked up some things, I picked up some things, and she is going to be sending through the trusty traveler she got a hand-delivered box, and so the trusty traveler will be uh, leaving her hands and entering the field as well. So, um, great to meet Melody, great to be here in Irwin, and then I'm heading on to uh, eastern regions to get ready for my daughter's graduation. So, uh, stay tuned, see what I post next. Bye-bye. So, I am here in Carlisle, Pennsylvania for my daughter's graduation. And a true huckster is always going to find time to do some antiquing. So in between all the other activities, I'm making some stops here at Lutz Antiques in Carlisle. 
Now what's interesting is my daughter's gone here for four years, but she spent a year in Germany and then with COVID, I have never, I've been to all of these shops, but I've never been to them as a reseller because I started reselling uh, more recently. So um, I'll kind of be looking at these places from a new, um, new perspective. And if you recognize Carlisle, it is the home of Jocelyn, Crazy Lamp Lady. And so maybe we will catch her in the wild. Who knows? Stay tuned. So in a previous video, I showed some of these punch boards and I've been fascinated by them ever since. Uh, this one seems to be a little bit older and uh, showing this one in honor of Vintage Vinny and his pinup collection. Uh, this one has, unfortunately, very faded, but uh, you can definitely see we got the pinup action in the front of the jackpot. So real figure, yes, <laughs> they're calling it real figure, jackpot pays. And it looks like, well, a couple of them have been punched. Well, one has been punched. So it's in pretty good condition, like in the sense of not being punched. A uh, couple have, but overall it's in pretty rough, uh, rough condition, uh, which is unfortunate because that pinup in her day probably would have been some beautiful colors. Um, but still, I'm kind of on the lookout for those, and I don't know, it might become one of my next collections. So I see the true antique trays so seldom, I felt I should go ahead and record these. Unfortunately, they're behind glass, so hopefully the, the uh, um, glare won't be too bad. But if you caught my deep dive with Vintage Vinny on Coca-Cola trays, he gave some tips on how to tell whether something is the original or if it had been a reproduction. And one of the giveaways, let's see if it's gonna let me zoom in here, yep, is the trademark is in the tail of the C in Coca-Cola. So in both this case and this one over here, you have that. You also have, I can't get any closer, um, you also have some copyright information. You can see in that green frame, you've got some dates of where it was made. Um, some of that gets reproduced in the reproductions. I know I've been thrown off before, so it's kind of a combination. Um, but this one, based on their appearance, uh, and some of those, I do think they're legit. The one's 200, and I can't quite see the spinning tag on the other one, but uh, definitely they're worth their money but it's so rare that you see the good ones. Uh, I wanted to kind of highlight them since I found them here at Let's Antiques. I don't show furniture all that often because it's not something I know particularly well, but I've always been fascinated by these tilt top uh, tea tables. Sometimes the tabletops can be very, very large, but this one's a really nice example. It's got some nice uh, marquetry in the middle. It's three-legged. And, you know, if it's, anything, if it's three legged, it'll always be stable. It'll never wobble. Um, so, you know, that's kind of nice. It's got the ball and claw feet. And if you're not familiar with a, with a tilt top table, it's tabletop folds vertical. And it's nice because this one has the design. Sometimes they're very heavily painted. That one, you know, has no design to it. It's still pretty because the wood is beautiful. Uh, but sometimes you can get really elaborate. But then there's a mechanism in the back. Sometimes the mechanism is really elaborate as well. But it just allows you to flip the tabletop, lock that mechanism in place, and you have a little tea table to use. And then when you're done, flip it back up and push it back into the corner so it's out of the way. So it's great for small spaces, but it packs a lot of impact. Uh, it's only $175, nice piece. Nothing I can pick up because I don't have room for it in my car, but uh, it is a nice looking piece. As I had hoped, I'm in Pennsylvania where a lot of my decorated stoneware originates. And uh, I'll just say that my piano is about to look a little bit different. It's gonna have some new friends sitting on top of the piano, uh, including uh, one that, uh, interestingly enough, was from Toronto. Well, Toronto's probably closer to here than it is to home, although maybe not. Uh, but I picked up a great piece uh, here at Lutz Antiques, and now let's see where I go next. So it is post-graduation time, and I am continuing my trek on the search for fun vintage and antiques. And at the suggestion of Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, uh, who heard I was going to try tackling Adamstown, 
I am starting right at uh, Mad Hatter Antiques, uh, only because I was driving by it on the way to another location, uh, also in Adamstown. So I figured, well, I'm not sure where my GPS is going to take me, so we will start here. Uh, and what I hear is there's a good stock of uh, flower frogs, so we shall see what we shall find at Mad Hatter Antiques Mall, or Antiques, here in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Although it's nothing I collect, I have to always get impressed when you see the wall of Pyrex. And so this has it mixed with the cradles, all the different styles. They even have some Pyrex ads, uh, which are kind of fun to see uh, showcasing the Pyrex, vintage Pyrex. And then you wrap the corner, more Pyrex right here on the end, the Friendship Bowl set. The Pink Daisy, Gooseberry, and then as you cross over, it's the flower frogs that I was told about. So here's the draped lady in multiple sizes. So you see the really tall ones in the back. I don't have any of those, but at those prices, I don't necessarily think I'm going to picking those up. And then you've got the rose lady in a couple different colors. Two kids, which you have the kid holding the kid goat. I've got him in a couple in, uh, I think I've got one or two of him. And then the bashful Charlotte or bashful lady is there um, tagging it. No September morn, so it would have been nice to be able to show all three, but uh, a very nice collection. Definitely you know, good prices, retail prices. Um, may look to see which colors I'm missing, um, but at these prices, I'm probably more interested in adding something I don't have as opposed to another color or size of something I already do. But I don't think I've ever seen this many in one place. So definitely thanks to Scott uh, for giving me the shout out and telling me to stop by because it is kind of fun to see all the different sizes and colors of one of my favorite collections. Probably should have showcased these while they were on the shelf, but I got excited because once again, I see a lot of the same of what I like in one place. I'm buying all of these. Some will stay in my own collection and I might resell a couple of them, who knows. But uh got my 19th century copper luster and I'm taking it home. There's nothing I can bring home from this place, but I just felt this booth needed to be showed off. So it's mid-century madness. And we can start with some of the lamps. And then we get into the wall art. Check out that Golden Gate Bridge backlit. 295 for that. Never even seen anything remotely like that. Another one of those uh, Turner prints. Uh, not framed as creatively as some others that I've seen, but in great condition. Got the pebble art, the drama masks for $110 for the pair. Some more, oh my god, check that out. $295 for that epic table lamp. Some great lamps up at the top. Some other wall art. And then this tension lamp. It's uh, $295. I don't know if it comes apart to be able to take it home, but just check this out so you know be on the floor and then they've had to uh, strap it onto the the uh, ledge because the ceilings are so hall, tall the actual tension part would not uh, support it but if you've got traditional eight foot ceilings think how cool that would look then you've got some great furniture another great floor lamp some fantastic swung glass, bittersweet um, color on that one. Check out the dripping on that. 95 bucks, that's actually a great price for that one. And then to get to the case, even more, just some fantastic pieces. So, all at a retail price, all good prices, just nothing I can buy to resell, 
and nothing I'm particularly going to be adding to my own collection, but uh, definitely worth showcasing. So if you watch the uh, last show and tell that Katie did with Christina of Lilacs something, um, she showed off her tiki collection. And so here's a little section here of uh, tiki glasses. So this is an Orchids of Hawaii. Uh, this one doesn't appear to have a mark. Tur oh, Tiki Surfer Girl. So this one's from Trader Dick's, one of our eight great restaurants. So I'm not sure where that's based. She had talked about Trader Vic's, um, so that must be something different. Some glass options with the tiki face. Kind of a little tiki idol here. Um, some more clear. Got a Hawaii plate in the back. And then drifting into some seashells. Um, here's a pretty cool ash pipe breast ashtray with the bejeweled eyes. So just like her collection showed, it can be uh, fairly varied and uh, fun to build a collection. And you know, the the big clear one, this is 30. That one's 30. She was 24. So maybe not the cheapest collection, but again, we're in a retail environment. You might be able to find them slightly cheaper, but um, just check out the variety. So you know, Trusty Huckster is always on the look for uh, new coasters and new designs. And uh, it's rare that you find a vintage set that's still in its original packaging. So I ad admittedly have not heard of these Costa Foam coasters. You can tell by their zip code because it's New York 13 New York. That's when they had the two digit zip codes. So that's after World War II, but before they moved to the five digit zip codes in 1963. So we're in you know late 50s, some definite mid-century modern. Costa Foam coasters, stain proof, mar proof, uh, you know, crisscross, and what they appear to be are like little koozies that have a rub black rubber bottom. So you would just kind of set this on the bottom. So I guess it wouldn't necessarily hold your drink. I guess, you know, I guess your glass would be smaller than that. So it would just sit on the, on the table, but it's a foam coaster. So they're super, super lightweight. And then the black and then the foam would actually absorb any moisture uh, from your drink sweating. Um, you know, these are $24. I didn't look them up. You know, that's just a price point I don't typically carry for resale and not something I would have in my own decor. Uh, but always like to learn, you know, they've, people have used coasters for a long time. And although they may not be as popular as they once were, when you find things that are as stylish as this, maybe that will will be what brings coasters back. I have only ever seen one or two of these ever. And here there's four of them hanging all together. So again, it's great to find places like this where the dealers specialize in a certain era. These are hanging ashtrays. So they're extremely sculptural. They're extremely decorative. I mean, just check out that fire glaze on this one. And they just would be hung on a chain from the ceiling. And, you know, next to your futon or peacock chair. So instead of taking up floor space, you hung these from the ceiling. Uh, you know, $95, the little sh shallow one is $85, I mean, these are definitely their price, um, but just think of how much power you can get in your decor with something like that hanging down, whether you use it as an uh, ashtray or not. So I hope you enjoyed the little Pennsylvania, you know, the uh, Keystone State Tour. Uh, I did enjoy the trip quite a bit, and one of the reasons I did have such a sporadic video uh, experience or collection was because in some cases I was enjoying myself so much I forgot to videotape. So that's why in some cases you only had one video inside. In some cases I you skipped places whole wholly. And I feel bad for some of those shops uh, that didn't get showcased um, because I didn't have a bad experience any place I went. But thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, if you've gotten this far and you're not a subscriber, um, one, thank you for your dedication, but I would also appreciate you going ahead and turning into a subscriber of Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Maybe give the video a thumbs up, comment in the comments, maybe something, one of your favorite items that you saw, what, you know, the last time you went to Pennsylvania, whatever. Those little things and little interactions on my video, it may seem small to you, but it does actually make a bigger difference to YouTube because it shows that people are actually interacting with my channel, which means my channel is worthy of sharing with other people with similar tastes. So all those little 
little things you do and all the any uh, YouTuber will ask you to do, it does make a difference. We're not just trying to collect uh, numbers and we're not, it's not a vanity project. We do want our channels to get exposed to as many people as possible. So we appreciate your assistance. Uh, and thank you so much again for uh, watching the video. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my